Hello everyone, welcome to IJLS Academy. In today's lecture, I, Dr. Vinita Gupta, going to present lecture on primary production of active ingredients in pharmaceutical industries, mainly by chemical synthesis. Before presenting lecture, I would like to introduce myself. I did PhD in 2014 from King George Medical University, Lucknow. Later, I worked as a young scientist fellow in medicinal chemistry department of CMAP Lucknow. Now, let's take a look to the background of this lecture. Pharmaceutical manufacturing is the synthesis of pharmaceutical drugs and is at industrial scale, which could be divided into two main stages. First is primary manufacturing and second one is secondary manufacturing. Primary manufacturing involves production of the active pharmaceutical ingredients or the active drug. Once the active ingredient is manufactured, the next stages of blending, granulation, milling, drying takes place. Secondary manufacturing is the conversion of the active ingredient into a final dosage form which could be administered to patient. It could be a form of tablet, capsule, injection, etc. The process of drug manufacturing can be broken down in a series of unit operation. Each step in a manufacturing process is known as unit operation. Separation, evaporation, crystallization, milling, coating are each in itself as a unit operation. All the unit operations should be in sequence to obtain the desired product from the starting material. In order to obtain active ingredients, three methods are here which are main. First is chemical synthesis, biotechnological or microbial action and third one is extraction method. Chemical synthesis is a process to execute chemical reactions to achieve one or more products. This method produces large amount of products. Aspirin, ibuprofen can be obtained by the chemical synthesis. Whereas biotechnological or microbial actions involve applications uh, such as recombinant DNA technology, industrial fermentation to produce useful substances. These applications provide high value products, antibiotics, vaccines are obtained through these biotechnological or microbial applications. Extraction. Process of extraction used to extract natural products from either from animals or plants, alkaloids, heparin, insulin from pigs, pancreas, thyroxine are some examples which are obtained through the process of extraction. It is also note, noteworthy that the extracted active ingredients could, could also be synthesized in the labs. So, the active ingredient which uh, we are extracting from the animal or plant could also be achieved by synthetic manufacturing. That means we can also uh, produce the product by chemical synthesis. Various reactions are utilized in the synthesis of active ingredients. These reactions could be Liquid liquid reaction where all the reactants are liquid. Solid liquid reaction in which a solid of low solubility reacts with a liquid. Gas reaction with liquids are also common. Most reactions in the pharmaceutical industries are carried out on a wage basis in a non-steady state. Non-steady state means where temperature within system varies with the time is a non-steady state. Whereas under steady state Temperature within the system does not change with time. So this is the difference between non-steady state and steady state. Now we are moving towards introduction of some common, commonly used equipments in the pharmaceutical industry. First type of equipment we will discuss is chemical reactor. Chemical reactor is a system in which chemical reactions take place in order to produce chemicals. 
they can vary in sizes from few centimeters to past structures. Design of chemical reactors also depends on many factors. Uh, it can depend on uh, thermodynamic, thermodynamics or kinetic properties of the chemical reactions be, be, being carried out in a laboratory. There are two main types of reactors used in the industries. These are batch reactor or continuous reactor. First, we will discuss batch reactor. Batch reactor is the simplest type of reactor. This is a view of batch reactor, usually made up of stainless steel or glass lined mild steel. Their size could also vary according to the need. So, different quantities of the reactants could be added and the reaction can take place according to the need of the manufacturer. Batch reactors are typically used in small scale production, brewing, pulping, production of enzymes are examples of batch reactors. Batch reactors fitted with external jackets or half wide coils for temperature adjustment by indirect contact with a heating or cooling medium which circulates through the coil or jacket. Direct heating is also possible with steam or cooling water system or any other material. Typical operating ranges are minus 25 degree centigrade to plus 1600 degree centigrade and volume up to 6 bar G. This is bar G is a unit of vacuum. Second one is continuous reactor. This is another form where reactants are fed continuously into the reactor at one point and products withdrawal takes place from another point simultaneously. The fading of uh, reactant and the flow rate of product should be equal. Working of water softener is an example of this type of reactor. Here we can see hard water pass through a tube containing an ion exchange resins. Reaction takes place. Here reaction takes place for hard water and salt water leaves from the exit. So this is an example of continuous reactor where hard water enters and salt water leaves in equal ratio. Second equipment is exchange heat exchangers. These used to provide necessary heat to increase reaction temperature because most chemical reactions are faster at higher temperature. So heat exchangers are frequently used to provide the heat necessary to increase the temperature of the reaction. This is a view of a uh, heat exchanger. Agitator. This is another equipment. They used to homogenize a medium. In industries, agitator processes products to ensure good heat transfer, either by heating or cooling, mixing of reactions, promote the reactions of chemical substances, keeping homogeneous liquid bulk during storage. Depending on the process requirements, variety of agitator, agitation systems are available with different profiles and speeds. These might be right angle with parallel shaft units, direct drive or air drive and designs, etc. These are the different type of agitators you can see here. These different types of agitators could be connected to both top and the bottom of the reactor to allow material to be charged. Agitation is done by putting uh, these agitator into motion by shaking or stirring to achieve mixing. Reaction materials. Now we will discuss about reaction materials means what we could add what types of materials we could add in the reactions. So, materials could be in liquid form or in solid form or in gas form. So, we will discuss here about liquid. Liquid could be divided into basically three categories when used in a reaction. First is solvent. Solvent allows the reaction to mix and react, which create a mobile mixture. Second work is solvent generally does not 
react or break down to any other components and solvents are used also because they uh, they exhibit the uh, that tendency of uh, recovery after processing either by a batch operation or by a recovery plant so this process of solvent recovery could also be achieved and we can recover solvent in original form reactant use in the form of reactant use of liquid reactants is generally desirable as they could easily be transferred or added to a reactor system under control conditions third form could be catalyst we all know about catalyst they require in a small amount to perform a chemical reaction liquid liquid separation techniques now we are moving to separation techniques how we can separate liquid liquids so here basically two types of main techniques are here thermal process separation of liquid liquid by thermal process or by non thermal process as the name is indicating thermal process involves heat and non thermal processes requires other properties to achieve the separation of liquids thermal process thermal process are commonly used where evaporation techniques gives an effective and efficient method for separation could be either single stage means flash distillation or fractional distillation by packing materials in a column means we can fractional distillation means we can uh separate liquids in a different uh, different steps or in fractions we can collect uh, liquid in a fractions azeotropic distillation here we will discuss a uh, important term, term azeotropic distillation in this technique an additional third material is added in order to separate two close boiling point components means here formation of azeotrope mixture will take space between one of the original components which increases difference in the boiling point and facilitate distillation for example water and ethanol mixture as we all know the boiling temperature of water is 100 degree centigrade but after mixing water and ethanol water ethanol mixture boils at 78.2 degree centigrade which which contains composition of 95% ethanol and 5% water by volume so water ethanol mixture is an example of azeotropic distillation now some disadvantages are also associated with thermal processes because many active ingredients could be heat sensitive especially natural products isolated from animal or plants are temperature sensitive so they can decompose at higher temperature so this is a disadvantage of thermal processes in case of heat sensitive ingredients however this problem could be resolved by reducing pressure using vacuum pump system that allow evaporation at lower temperature here in case of sensitive ingredients we can reduce pressure so they can evaporate evaporation can take place at lower temperature and we could save the active ingredient by higher temperature now non thermal processes it is relatively common process to add a liquid to the process into which impurities or even product is preferentially soluble addition of another solvent forms immiscible separate phase which induces soluble impurities or product commonly carried out with water or aqueous solution known as washing it could be achieved by using separating funnel ye uh, this uh, view this glass apparatus is a separating funnel here we can also separate 
two layers you can easily see these layer one and layer two in this separating funnel so this is a norm non-thermal process to separate liquids large however this process could be used in a normal laboratories or R&Ds but in large production plants mechanical techniques such as decanter centrifuge multiplate disc centrifuge or counter flow liquid liquid extraction devices to increase the efficiency of separation solid isolation separation of solid from liquid generally involves some form of nitration nitration is a process of introduction of a nitro group to a in an organic compound once the solid has solid has been produced it needs to be isolated from the liquor or mother liquor filters we can also use some filters solid impurities up to 10 kg can be removed using cartridge bag or multi plate filters such as karmic filter we can use to separate impurity from the solid crystallization this is an very important step and uh, many synthetic processes involve isolation of compounds in a solid state or uh, we could also isolate liquid solid complex through isolation uh, through crystallization it could be applied at intermediate stage or final stage of processing means crystallization can be done for an intermediate compound or a final compound the process of crystallization could be achieved by in several ways by cooling a compound we could keep the compound in a refrigerator for an overnight or for a few hours to crystallize a compound or by evaporation or by concentration or by cooling by solvent change sometimes we could crystallize compound by changing the solvent by precipitation using reaction or by changing ph by solvent change by solvent change we could also we could also precipitate the compound so that sometimes crystallization could take place here is another technique by sono crystallization this is called sono crystallization which involves the use of ultrasound to form a nucleus for crystallization drying final step is to dry the intermediate or final drug component this reduces or removes any residual solvent or moisture level from the compound and forms a free flowing powder if solid is an intermediate, then subsequent processing often involves the use of a different solvent. Dryers can be can be classified into two main types: direct drying or indirect or enclosed drying process. Direct drying involves air or more commonly nitrogen gas for heating and pass through the solid, while indirect drying take space under the vacuum that allows solvent evaporation at lower temperatures blending one of the most important phase in manufacturing process this is a process of homogeneous distribution which is used to create single concentration or mass by combining various ingredients form texture overall feel of the product is determined by the way how it was blended Intensity, power, speed, and design might vary according to the requirement. Determines blending also determines the particle size distribution, which aggregates or lump, including aggregates or lumps of material. It also determines particle shape, means particle will be in a spear shape or rods in a cubes or plates or irregular shape. Presence of moisture, particle surface properties such as roughness, cohesion and flowing properties also depends on the blending process milling milling is the next step after blending it is used to reduce 
the average particle size to increase homogeneity, dosage, uniformity, bioavailability, and solubility of the drug. Once repeated blending followed by milling is conducted to improve the manufacturability of the blends. Another process is granulation. Granulation is just opposite process of milling in which small particles are bound together to form a large particles known as granules used to prevent the mixing of components in a mixture. Granule contains all of the components in their required proportions. Granulation process improves flow characteristic of powders because very small particles could not flow properly. So, granulation is an important step. Granulation also improves compactation properties for tablet formation. Packaging of active ingredient is carried out in a controlled environment to protect the product from contamination by external sources. And second requirement of proper tracking is to protect the operator from exposure to the active material. Solid powders could be packed in sakes or drums. Liquids products could be packed into appropriate containers. So this was a lecture related to chemical synthesis and pharma industries. We will cover biotechnology section and secondary processing of drugs in our next session. If you have any query, you can write me at my email ID as given in the earlier slide. You can catch ITLX Academy on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, WhatsApp and LinkedIn. Thank you so much and take care. Bye-bye.